What's up guys, this is Cody here, and today I'm going to be showing you the top 25 tweets for iOS 8.4. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first tweet I want to talk about is Asphalia 2. Now what this tweet does is basically allow you to lock down specific applications within the settings to only be able to be accessed by you by using your Touch ID. So you just tap on an application, for instance, I've locked down Cydia, so you'll see when I scan my fingerprint that it's going to open right up. But for everybody else, you're not going to be able to get into that. Also, you can do the exact same thing for, let's say, your Spotlight or your Control Center or your App Switcher. So, for instance, if we try to open up the Control Center, you'll see that I get a Touch ID prompt. So we'll just tap on that. Same thing for the Multitasking or the App Switcher. You'll notice that you have an option to put in a passcode as well. So you'll set up a passcode right when you get this. So we'll just type in our passcode here, and it's going to launch the App Switcher. Now, you'll notice right here that I actually have Cydia uh, blurred out and that's due to Asphalia 2 because I have that app locked down. So basically if you don't turn on uh, Touch ID for your app switcher that means anybody can access your app switcher but if you have an application locked down like Cydia then it's going to blur that card out. So that's just pretty helpful to have. Next up we have a tweet called Swipe Selection Pro. Now what this tweet does is allow you to swipe across your keyboard in order to move that cursor throughout text as you can see right there. Now you can also you know, swipe from the either backspace key, you can see right there that that's going to allow me to highlight or you can do the exact same thing. Let's just say we were gonna move the, actually let's move this across all the way up to the top and you'll notice if we swipe across from the left, you can see that's gonna highlight to the right just like that. So really this just makes editing text a whole lot easier. You also notice right down here that I have a tweak installed better five icon dock. Obviously what that's going to allow you to do is put that fifth icon right down there in the dock. Next up we have a tweak called type status. Now what this tweak does is basically give you an overlay over your status bar showing when somebody is typing to you. It's basically going to give you those ellipses that you would normally see inside of the messages app in your conversation but instead it's going to show you right on your status bar that way no matter where you are you can always see when somebody's typing to you. So just to give you an idea, you can just tap on test typing. So that's basically what it's gonna do. It's gonna tell you uh, that somebody is typing and give you the name of that person right there as they're typing. So it's really as simple as that. Next we have a tweet called last app. Now what this tweet does is basically allow you to set up an activator gesture in order to go to the previous application that you were just in. So I've actually set mine up to be a double tap on the status bar. You can set it up to be basically whatever you want, but you can see right here when I double tap on the status bar, it's gonna go to the previous application, which was the setting. So if I do it again, then we're gonna go back to the music app, just like that. Next, we have a tweet called Activator. So you can see right here, if we swipe over here to Activator, what this allows you to do is set gestures to perform specific actions. So let's say, for instance, that we wanted to change what a three-finger pinch does on our device. You can see that I assigned it to compose a new tweet. So if we go back to our springboard or for actually anywhere on our device, we can use three fingers and we can pinch, and that's going to give us a new tweet sheet right there. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Spring to Mize 3, then you should be. This is a massive tweak. It's about 100 different tweaks inside of one. So you can see right here that you can change up a bunch of different things within the animations, the app slider, which is actually the app switcher, control center, dock, folders, icons, lock screen, notification center, pages, and even the status bar. So let's say, for instance, if we tapped on the status bar, we wanted to change the carrier, we can toggle that on, change the carrier just by typing in something right here. We can also have a custom time. You can type something in right there. You can hide different different items within your status bar. So if you don't want those indicators up there, you can just toggle them off right here. And let's just say that we want to go into our icons. This is actually going to allow us to hide the different things. We can lock the layout, so not allowing people to change the layout. You can disable wiggling when you're in wiggle mode. You can disable uninstall, so it's not going to let people delete your applications. I mean, there is a ton of different things that you can do with this tweak, and I highly recommend checking out the link in the description below. And I go through like every single feature and action that you can do in Spring to Mize 3. I did a complete review. It's about 20 minutes long, so we can go into real depth if you guys don't know what that is and you want to check it out. Next, we have a tweet called Flux. Now, what this tweet does is basically allow you to read things at night much easier, just because it's a whole lot easier on the eyes. So you can see right here how bright and white this is. But if we enable Flux, you can see that it's actually going to get very orange, which is very, very helpful on your eyes. It makes everything a whole lot easier to read, and I highly recommend it if you do do a lot of reading at night. 
Next, we have a tweet called call bar. Now, what this tweet does is basically not take up your entire screen when you get a phone call or a FaceTime call. So for instance, if we get a call right here, you can see that I'm calling myself on FaceTime. We have a decline button, we have a remind me button, a message button, or an answer button. Now, if you wanted to you know, dismiss this without actually hanging up, you can you just swipe it up just like that by taking the grabber right there. Now, if we wanted to actually bring this back down, then you can just swipe it down. You'll see this is going to be built in into your notification center. So if we wanted to answer it, then you just tap answer or we can decline it just like that. Next is a tweet called CC settings. So if we swipe up right here, now the color is actually from spring to mize, but right up here is what CC settings does. It allows you to add specific or more toggles right up here at the top, allowing you to basically access a whole bunch of different things very easily straight from your control center. Of course, you can pick and choose which ones you want in your control center in the settings. Next is a tweet called iFile. Now what iFile allows you to do is access any file on your device. So you can see as we scroll through here, these are all the directories. So if we wanted to go a little bit deeper, deeper, let's say that we wanted to go into library. So then we could go into alkaline. And let's say that we had an alkaline theme that wasn't in Cydia, but maybe we got it off of Reddit. So we downloaded it and then all we had to have to do is copy and paste it right here. And then it would be available in alkaline, allowing us to theme with that theme. But I do highly recommend people to not tinker around with iFile if they don't know what they're doing, just because if you delete something very important, like an important file or something like that, then it could cause you to restore your device. Now next we have a really helpful tweet called iCleaner Pro. Now what this does is basically allow you to uh, get rid of all that useless information that you really don't need on your device, just because it's gonna save a whole lot of storage space. Now of course you can obviously customize this however you'd like. You can make it not look in log files or cache files, temporary files, anything like that. You can just toggle that off if you want to. But if we just tap on clean, you can just sit back, relax, and let it delete all of that information that you don't need. All right, so you can see here that it just finished cleaning that up, doesn't take too long at all, and it freed up 530 megs of space and deleted 5,440 files. Now, after it's done, it's just gonna respring and then you'll be good to go. Now, you probably noticed as I've been swiping through all of my pages, that I get a different animation on these. Now this of course is due to a tweak called Barrel. Now this is a tweak that's been around for a very long time, but what it does is allow you to change that page animation right there to basically whatever you want. I have it set on random so it changes every single time, but you can obviously set it up to just one specific page animation that more fits your style. Now if you have a jailbroken device and you don't have Zeppelin, then you are missing out. So you can see what it does, it allows you to customize your carrier logo right there. And just by default, you actually get quite a few uh, different themes. So obviously you'll want to enable this and then you just tap on the theme right here and then you can see all the different logos that you can actually set up just right out of the box. Now of course you can download more custom uh, themes that you want. So you just search for Zeppelin logos in City and you can download them directly and install them right here. So you can see there's quite a few different ones and as I tap it, it automatically changes right up there. You don't have to respring or anything like that. So definitely a really awesome tweak that you need to check out. Now you've probably noticed that my font is different on my device and that's due to a tweak called Bytefont 2. So if we swipe over here and open this up, it's gonna put an application on your springboard. So you just open this up, you tap on basic and this is where you're going to be able to apply your font. So of course you are gonna to have to grab your fonts from Cydia. So you would just open up Cydia, go into sections and then scroll down to Bytefont 2 and then you can check out all the different fonts. This is actually Galette. So this is the one that I'm using right now. So you just tap on that and then it's gonna ask you, do you wanna respring your device to apply this font? and then it respring's, and then you're good to go. Next, you'll notice right up here that I have a different theme for my battery, and that's due to a tweet called Alkaline. So with Alkaline, that's basically just a theming tool, and then you download Alkaline themes in order to theme your battery right here. Now, once you download Alkaline, it actually comes with three separate themes. So if we scroll down here and open that up, you'll see that we just tap on theme right here, and I'm using the theme Habesha, but you also have Bolus and Spots. Now, once you select one of these, you'll have to respring your device in order for that to take effect, as you can see right there. But that's basically all that you have to do. You can look for different themes in City and download those if you wanna make that battery look just a little bit different. Next, we have a tweet called I Caught You Pro. Now, I Caught You Pro has a ton of different features, but one of the main and most notable features is when someone actually grabs your phone and tries to put in a passcode, it actually will take a picture of that person if they put in the passcode wrong. 
and it'll also email it to you or you can actually save it to your photo album. So you can see right here, let's just say that we are going to go to our lock screen right here and we're gonna swipe across and let's say that we typed in the wrong code. Mm -hmm. So when you get that, it's going to take a picture with the front facing camera and it's going to show up in my photo album as well as email me. So we do it one more time mm -hmm. and you'll see that we'll have two. So now let's go ahead and, mm -hmm. well maybe we'll have three. Let's type in the correct passcode, and now let's just go to my Photos app, which I'm not sure where it is, so I'm just going to tap on this right here, and you can see these are the photos that it actually just took. So these are the ones that were actually emailed to me as well. So if we go into my mail and we tap on Inbox, you'll notice that I have I Caught You Pro emails right here. So if I tap on this, you'll see that it's going to download the image, so it's going to email it to me. Of course, if you don't have your phone, then you're not going to be able to see it on your in your photos album so of course you want it sent to you as well so that's a fantastic picture of me so you can see exactly how that works now you're also gonna have some really helpful information right up here because what this does is give you basically the address as well as a link to Google's map of where your phone is because that's where this picture right here was taken so that's just really cool I think that's a really cool feature and it's gonna help you find your device if you actually lose it Next up, we have a tweet called Virtual Home 8. Now, what this does is basically replace your home button with the Touch ID sensor. So if you place your finger over the Touch ID sensor, it's going to act as if you press the home button down. So you can see right here, if we open up an application and then we place our finger over the Touch ID, it's just going to go to the home screen, just like a home button would. But if we open this up, you can see that you can actually change the actions right here. So a double tap is going to actually open up reachability, a short hold is going to open up multitask, and a tap and short hold is going to put it to sleep. So just for instance, if we do a double tap, you can see that that's going to invoke reachability. Now if we go back here and let's just say that we did a short hold, try that again, and it's going to go to our app switcher. Now my app switcher is a little funky just because I jacked with it on uh, Spring Tomize, but, or of course if you wanted to tap and short hold and it's going to put it to sleep. Now folder enhancer is obviously going to enhance your folders. You can see right here if we open up the settings, this is the folder enhancer uh, settings panel and you'll notice that we can toggle on allowing nested folders. So if you want a folder inside a folder, just toggle that on. Also we can close all folders when we launch an application or press on the home button. So normally when you launch an application with in a folder, it's actually going to still be an open folder when you go back to your springboard. Obviously you can toggle that on and that won't be an issue anymore. Down here you can also change the effect, so if you want to animate when you open close, you can toggle that on, or if you want to zoom your wallpaper, toggle that on. Right down here you can use a custom layout as well, or you can use a custom layout for the folder view. So if we go back here, you'll notice that if we open up a folder, I do have a folder here somewhere, let's go ahead and open that up. And now let's say that we open up uh, just the Apple Store. So we'll open this up and then we'll go back to the home screen. Now you'll see this can go back to the actual springboard rather than to that folder because I had that toggled on. Now if we open this up again, let's say that we wanted to uh, create a nested folder. You can see it works just like that. So now when we press the home button and we go back one layer, you can see that it's going to go back to that first folder. And then if we press it again, then we can go back to the springboard. Of course you can still change your layout as well as change the preview layout which is this look right here. So if you just wanted one application right there then you can change that up as well. You probably noticed throughout the video that my animations are very snappy and quick and that's due to a tweak called no slow animations and really that's all that it does. It takes away all the slow animations and speeds them all up. So if you want something that makes your phone look a little bit snappier just by speeding up animations then definitely download no slow animations. Next we have a really cool tweak called Clever Pin. Now what this tweak does is basically allow you to uh, take away the passcode in specific situations on your device and it will do it automatically after it's set up. So let's say for instance for me, I live at home by myself so I don't necessarily need a passcode when I'm at home. And I can set that up very simply with Clever Pin. So you can see right here that I have toggled on connected to network and then you actually have to specify which network that is. So if I'm connected to my home network, then I don't really necessarily need my passcode. So I've added my home network, which was my current network when I set this up. And then we can go back here and you can see you can also toggle on when playing music or when your battery's charging or when you're in airplane mode. But also right down here at the bottom, you can set it up in terms of a time interval. So let's say from 
8 p.m. to 6 a.m. You don't necessarily need a passcode on your device. Then you can just set that up right here. But I do have this enabled for my network and I'm connected to a network. So if we go to my home screen here, or I'm sorry, my lock screen, and then we swipe across, I shouldn't get a passcode. Should just unlock just like that, and it does. Now, if you want to spice up the look of your badges, then you can download a tweet called Color Badges. You can see what that does right there. It basically takes the dominant color of that particular application and then uses it for that color of the uh, badge right there. Now, you also notice that we have a little bit of a thin white border around there as well, just to really make those badges pop. I think it looks really good. You can change this up a little bit here in the settings. So if we scroll down here to the color badges setting panel, we open that up. Any of these changes, you wanna make sure that you respring your device, but basically you have uh, Apex folder support if you guys use that. You can toggle off your borders if you wanna do that, or you can actually use legacy borders. So I definitely recommend checking this out if it looks like something you wanna use. Now, if you guys have been jailbroken for some time, then you may have used a tweet called Zephyr. Now, Zephyr hasn't been updated in quite some time, but Tage has taken its place. So you can see right here what this allows you to do is use gestures to do several different things. So first of all, we can close applications, we can switch applications, we can even use a quick switcher, and right down here, we can also lock the device if we wanna do that. So just for instance, let's say we wanted to close out of this application. Well, we can do so by grabbing from the bottom, and just swiping up, and that's gonna close the application. Now, if we're on the springboard, we wanted to open up the, the app switcher, then you can just swipe up just like that, and that's gonna bring up the app switcher. Now, we can also use the quick switcher as well. So if we swipe up from the left side or the right side, we can just swipe up, and then we can scroll across all of our applications. So that's gonna give us just a quick, lightweight way to scroll through all of our apps. Now, if we were in an application, and we wanted to go to the next app, we can just swipe over just like that and it's going to bring us right over. And last but not least, if we wanted to lock the device, then we can swipe up from the top just like that and it's going to lock the device. Now another really popular tweak we have here on our lock screen is called Lock Glyph. And you can see what that does right there. It basically gives us this little animated fingerprint so when we use our Touch ID, it's actually going to animate and put a little check mark there and then unlock the device as you can see right there. So that's really all that Locklift does. You can actually download themes if you wanna do that. Instead of having that fingerprint right there, you can download a whole bunch of different things to put there on your lock screen. And last but not least, we have a tweak called C Clean. Now what this tweak does is basically make your control center look a whole lot more minimalistic. So you can see right here, if I pull that up, that I have gotten rid of the separators for all the different sections. I've gotten rid of the outlines for the buttons for these quick launch applications down here and also I don't have any media controls and it just looks a whole lot cleaner to me. But you can see right here, if I open up the settings, you have quite a few different options that you can go through. You can enable or remove the background for the brightness and airplay slash airdrop, which I've already done. You can also remove the labels for those as well. Now right down here, you can alter the icon background so you can put it on clear. You can use a circle or a square. I use the clear, I just think it looks a whole lot cleaner. And then right down here, you can actually hide specific things. So I've actually hidden the grabber so you don't see the grabber right up here. And I've also hidden the media controls. Of course, you can hide whatever you'd like just to get that nice minimalistic look. So that's all I have for the top 25 tweaks for iOS 8.4. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos, then go ahead and subscribe. All right, until next time, peace.